Well, it's not often that I find myself holding a pair of these. So the deal with testicles is there's not a whole lot of meat to go around on them. So we're gonna do our best to stretch them and give as many people a taste of them as could possibly want to try them. It's a shame I know most people won't want to try them because of what they are. However, I prefer to judge it on how it tastes. I'm making a pretty atypical crostini, which will use the testicle for its butteriness and texture to help deliver a bunch of layers of flavor in a way that people can approach more easily than just eating deer testicle in its full form. I don't intend to cook these to shock or disgust, but to honestly use as much of the deer as possible. Wouldn't it be a shame to discard such an important organ? So let's start by breaking them down from their full and recognizable form. There really are three layers of tissue to get through. The first layer is the skin, which obviously isn't covering these anymore. Next is a silver skin type of layer, which needs to come off just as it would off of any muscle cut. But the third is optional to remove depending on who is butchering them. Some remove it and others leave it with pluses and minuses to each method. I'm trying both, one on each, to see which works best for this recipe. Removing the third layer feels a bit like removing the casing off of a sausage, and what is left is a loose and fragile blob of fatty looking tissue. Not exactly an appetizing description, but let's hold judgment for now. The main concern for me with removing this casing-like membrane is that I'm removing the barrier to moisture loss when I cook it. However, the advantage is that there is no membrane that may impart a tough texture after it's cooked. It is certainly easier to handle with the final membrane intact. We'll compare after cooking, but we need to build the foundation of our crostini, the toast. Use a French baguette sliced vertically in half inch slices. Eight of them should be plenty for two testicles. Don't cut on an angle. We want to keep the pieces small for the right proportions since it will be carrying such small quantities of ingredients. After coating the top side of each slice with olive oil, place in a 375 degree oven for about 10 minutes until crispy and lightly browned. As the toasts cook, prepare the baby arugula salad. Begin by mincing a shallot. We only need about two tablespoons worth. Then combine two tablespoons of walnut oil or olive oil with one tablespoon of white wine vinegar and the shallot. Season with salt and pepper and whisk to combine. Add a couple of large handfuls of the baby arugula and toss to combine. Let sit and meld together. Now we want to sous vide our quail eggs at 148 degrees for about 20 minutes, which gives a slightly runny yolk that will slip away from most of the white. Adjust the sous vide so that the outlet of the pump isn't causing the eggs to bump around too much. The toasted baguette slices should be done around this point, so remove and let sit. Now it's time to actually saute the testicles. Using butter over medium heat, I'm starting with the testicle with no membrane or casing as I think of it. For most wild game meat, I don't like to go past medium or usually even medium rare, but for some reason, mentally, I just need to make sure this gets cooked all the way through, which still only takes a minute or two. Then I move on to the other one, and unfortunately, it bursts since the membrane provides a barrier that doesn't allow steam to escape from. Quite a bit of the juices are lost, but it's okay. No matter how much you try to contain the pressure, sometimes you're just gonna bust one. I'm allowing them to rest so that no more moisture is lost unnecessarily. The eggs have cooked for long enough now, and are the last component to this dish that need preparation. Remove each one, and then return to the rested testicles to slice into 4 to 6 slices, depending on how brave of a buck you harvested. Then we can assemble the crostini. I'm only making a few so that I can taste some of the sautéed testicles separately, but you should have enough ingredients for at least 4 and up to 8. 
Each toast gets a light spread of goat cheese, then a small bunch of arugula salad, then a slice or two of testicle. My first one is only getting one slice with the membrane. The tricky part then is to gently crack open a quail egg, which has a shell that doesn't crack as easily as a chicken egg, and gently scoop out the egg onto the crostini. Much of the white will be left behind with the shell, which is perfect. If it hasn't broken, slice open the creamy yolk to allow it to slightly run, then hit each crostini with a bit of sea salt and black pepper. My second one uses two slices of the testicle with no membrane, which are much smaller. You could think of these crostini as a mini salad lyonnaise. The toasted base is the crouton, the baby arugula is the frisee, which by the way would make a fine substitution, the quail egg is the poached egg, and the testicle replaces the lardon or bacon as the fatty bit. Okay, so I finished my crostinis, but I still haven't tried just the testicle. And uh, it is a little intimidating, I have to admit. I've got a couple pieces of testicle that I took the casing off of, and a few pieces that still have the casing. And you can see that these pieces are a lot bigger because it retained all the moisture, well, a lot of the moisture that was lost in these little pieces. So, here's the one with the membrane. The membrane is tough. It's really, really tough stuff. Um, the inside, though, it's really creamy, um, almost, uh, uh, really hard to say. It took me a little bit to figure it out, and I've only had it once, but it's remarkably similar in flavor and texture to boiled brain. That's sure to help out everyone out there that has had brain and now wants to eat testicles. I want to try the piece without the membrane now, see if it tastes the same. The texture is nice. It's drier than the other, but not dry. Um, no weird flavors, just kind of creamy, buttery. Uh, crostini. Mm. There's so many textures in it. The crunchiness from the crostini, um, the creaminess of the goat cheese, but the creaminess of the testicle mixed in with it. The acidity on the baby arugula salad to balance it all out. Now I'm going to try the crostini that has the membrane on it. So that time it actually worked out. It wasn't quite as tough as the other piece I had, so. Not the end of the world. Still, I'd recommend taking off the whole casing membrane thing um, and using it that way. The crostini is a good way to kind of ease someone into this because there's so many other flavors and textures. I don't think this would offend anyone. Trying it without the membrane, I think most people would have it and think it was pretty tasty if they didn't know what it was. Totally worth trying. Next time you get a buck, keep the balls. Try it out. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe.